rotations that's gonna be this area over here let me just throw myself into this video really fast here okay here we are Let's see if we can expand me damn make myself nice and big all right Jesus it's fucking light and again I'm gonna have my my nice lighting is arriving in two days so that will get rid of these lighting problems all right so I just wanted to before I go into my main video about rotations which is this pink area here which is arguably one of the most important obviously you need to get girls in that category in the first place but once you fuck a hot girl if it was awesome like if you guys had good chemistry she was cool it was good sex of course you're gonna want to repeat it okay so I'm gonna teach you in this video how to maintain a rotation so other words rotation are harem it's basically just girls that are not your girlfriend that you're seeing regularly okay um, and I'll go over all the rules for that now, just to tie this back in my other videos, I just put out a video yesterday called How to Run a Night Game Interaction. That's this box here. Actually, it's okay, Night Game is here, and then I taught you how to have the game skill to run that Night Game inter Interaction. So now, you should, based on that video, it's like an hour and a half, that should teach you, again, it's based off years and years and years of experience, that should teach you the skills you need for this box here. And it should also teach you the skills you need for this box here because I told you how to run the interaction and also how to um, pull, which is this path here, okay? So you know, this the video, I should have made a little note, but the video on how to run an iGame interaction on my channel, that's gonna cover these two green boxes here. That's gonna lead to pulls, okay, back here, and once you get back to the house, if you're making out and stuff like that, it's pretty easy to close. Um, but I do have a video on closing, but that applies more for closing dates because I'm talking about how you start off on the couch. I talk about in my night game interaction video, you're going to mostly be just going straight to your room, making out, playing with her clit. She's going to be playing with her dick. You guys are going to get naked and you're going to have sex. Okay. So you're going to get a bunch of phone numbers from night game. Now, watch my video on setting up dates straight to the house. That's going to be... Your texting skill, you can. I give you the exact text that I'm using. Again, years of innovation and um, analysis. My hair looks fucking weird with this light. Jesus Christ. Okay, looks like it's like partially not there from this angle. Um. So that is going to take care of this green box. That's going to have a whole bunch of dates coming to your house. So watch that video. Setting up first dates straight to the house. Now you're going to have a whole bunch, of, you're going to have a whole stream of dates coming to your house. And for those of you that want to do the public dates when they insist, you can do that. You can go meet at a bar or a restaurant or whatever you fancy, bowling, <laughs> billiards, okay, whatever you want to fucking do. Now, your ability to close, I'm going to have to make one more video actually on, on how to, if you do a public date, how to get the girl home from the date and how to run your public date. But let's just assume you're using my wine method that I talk about. And again, it doesn't need to be wine. It can be, let's go have coffee at my house. Let's go have tea at my house, whatever the fuck you want. But using, you can just modify the text. But using those text sequences, you're going to have a whole bunch of chicks come to your house. So now here you're at the next area of skill. Now you have girls at your house that need to be closed. You need to have sex with. It's like freaking me out. It's like, Jesus. I need another haircut again. Alright, here actually. Totally irrelevant. Whatever. Um <laughs> coming straight to the middle, it looks like it's like Wolverine or something. Alright, so watch my video on how to close, okay? I go in exactly exact detail what to do once you have this girl back at your house. Okay? That leads to sex. And it leads to increasing your leg count, whatever the fuck you want to call it, right? It leads to having, hooking up with these girls, okay? And then, um, geez, I can't wait for those lights. It's like so annoying. Now, today we're going to cover how to retain these girls, okay? So that you can have a harem. It's totally up to you how many girls you want at once. I mean, this, most of you aren't even at the point where you have a rotation. It's fucking awesome. I've talked about in other videos. 
it's like a conglomerate super girlfriend. Some have big tits, some have a big ass. You know, some have flat midsection, some, you know, have piercings or tattoos, whatever. So there's a variety of body types. And in terms of personality, some like to stay in, some like to go out, some like to be freaky with BDSM, like some like to have intellectual conversations. So you can do all these different things with each of them. I personally, and this, I'm not advocating you should do this, but I personally run like six to 12 girls at a time. And I work about 20 to 30 leads at a time. And, and the leads are always coming into these sources and they're running through this funnel. And, you know, so I have like six to 12 regulars and one, and one or two main chicks. The main chicks are, are like the equivalent of a girlfriend without the label. You know, I never tell them they're my girlfriend, but that's basically like their role. Jesus, this light is really fucking pissing me off. Oh, well. I guess if I lean back, it, it lessens the effect. So, um, okay, so we're just going to hop right into it. I'm going to make another video. That's going to be the same video here, but I'm going to make another video from, from like the full-on angle of me. And then we're going to splice the two together here. Okay, but I'm going to go over all the principles of how to run a rotation. So I'm going to connect this to the next one. But I've covered all these green boxes now, guys. And I'm going to I'm going to keep bolstering all this stuff. I'm going to keep adding in like extra stuff to improve. Um, but I've given you, you can literally go to a bar or club, run the interaction how I tell you to, pull. I taught you how to do it in that video and how to run a night game interaction. If the logistics are bad, get a phone number. See how fucking structured and easy game can be? What, is, what a fucking surprise, right? And then I gave you the exact text. You don't, you can be a robot. You don't need, like, the, the, the worst of you at game and the best of you at game can use these exact text. It's going to come across the same way to the girl. Although, the way you conduct yourself in the beginning here is going to impact how she, how receptive she is to this. I'll, I'll probably make one other video going before these blue boxes about how to really cultivate that alpha personality and cultivate that high value, attractive personality that, that you're going to bring to the table when you do night game and online game and day game. Okay. So you can use those exact texts. It's, it's the, I'm just recapping one more time. Setting up first dates to the house. Then you have girls coming to the house. I go over how to close. Now in this video we're covering here, I just wanted to recap how this all relates back. And this chart, by the way, is discussed extensively in the tactical game breakdown video on my channel. So here's today the screen box and I'm going to close this video and we will continue on the next one. All right, here we are back now in full screen mode. Um, all right, bear with me on the, the silly lighting here. I have, <laughs> I have the Google illumination coming up here. All right, so to cover rotations, I know this shit inside out, but I made a post it was pretty extensive about it. So I'm going to kind of just follow along with that and I'll just add an extra talk over that. Okay. So remember what we just covered where I was picture in picture with that flow chart, feel free after you watch this video to go back and see, I want you guys to see how this all fits. It's really just a, a flow chart. It's really just a funnel. It's really just a structured thing. I'm teaching you how to bolster up each of the areas. Okay. And I'll, I'll go over how to get yourself alpha and all that stuff begin in the beginning before you even collect any leads. All right. So, Point number one, there's 13 points here. I'll just cover them each in turn. Point number one, I don't usually do qualification. I'm just reading my post because, and I'll just add on to it. I don't usually do qualification, but for transition to the fuck buddy frame. So that means putting a girl on rotation, or you call her a fuck buddy, whatever. It's good to show them that you appreciate them non-sexually. Okay, that's point number one. So I will say blanket, feel good statements. For instance, I have really high standards and I'm really picky but you meet most of them, thankfully. Okay, so that makes her feel special. You're not doing this all the time, even though you are. Okay, or you will be you know, once I get you good at this. I say I feel, <laughs> I, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to, when I, when I say this stuff, this isn't about all like a whole bunch of manipulation and like, you know, being a huge asshole and stuff. This is just what works. And I actually do respect the girls. I do treat them really well. I do take care of them really well. I, I listen to them about their lives. Um, you know, it's a, it's a really nice relationship without the label, without all that bullshit stuff about jealousy and, and trust and all that stuff. Okay. Because it's not a, it's not a boyfriend, girlfriend thing. They know that. Okay. But I, here's what I say. I say, um, let's see. Oh, I, I feel a special connection between, <laughs> well, I think I'm going to skip something. Let me just say this again. I have really high standards and I'm really picky, but you mean most of them, thankfully, 
I usually only want to see f about 5% of girls again that I go on dates with. Okay, so it's showing you're very selective. But I can tell we are going to hang out a lot. What is that doing? Future pacing in, in marketing terms. It's also setting a really strong frame. I can tell, and you, again, you're providing no argument for this. You don't need to. Because how do girls operate? On emotion. I was a philosophy major. I'm really into math. I'm really into writing like airtight, like deductive proofs and all this other shit. Like I took, when I was a freshman and undergraduate, I took a graduate level proof writing class that PhD students were in. Just because I had an advanced intelligence, uh, I'm able to make very, very, very solid logical arguments. But a woman's brain is not set up like that. I'm not saying women are all logical. She just spent most of her time in tribes socializing and stuff like that. And, and they're wired to feel emotions. So I say, I can tell we're going to hang out a lot. Okay, that, it's like if I said, oh, I, you know, I don't believe in astrology, but if I was like, oh, like I'm a Libra, that means we're going to have a great time together because you're a Leo. Bullshit. They, they think this way though. I'm not saying they all believe in astrology. All right, you understand my point. <laughs> a lot of them believe in astrology. Um, so I can tell we're going to hang out a lot. It's setting a very strong frame. It's saying like, we're going to hang out a lot. I can just tell. And she's like, oh, like, I'm glad you can tell. And now, and now she believes this. And so now you've framed things that you guys are going to see each other much more in the future. Then I say, I say stuff like, I feel a special connection between us. I feel like you get me. It's hard to describe, but it's awesome. Right? So it's, she's like, wow, like this is like a unique, rare. <laughs> it's funny, like explaining that, like teaching this to you guys. I feel like I'm like <laughs> bringing you to the dark side here. And this stuff really works so really well. And you can actually like only say this to the girls you actually do feel a special connection with. If you want to be like Mr. Moral, <laughs> I don't know what the word is. Moral oral. There's that show. Um, I really like that you're, and then I, I'll state a bunch of non-physical attributes. I really like that you're smart, and these can be real things. Like you can, and I'm sure you do appreciate your non-physical things. So just tell her about there. Tell tell her about them. I really appreciate that you're smart. I really like that you have a lot of ambition. I really like that you're working two jobs to to pay, like pay for your school bills or whatever the fuck. I really like that you can cook. I really like that you have lots of cool friends. You have these cool hobbies. Okay, so to recap. You have high standards, you're picky, but luckily she falls into that 5% category of girls you want to see again. And now you can tell you're going to hang out a lot. Okay. Why? Because you feel a special connection. She gets you. It's hard to describe, but it's so awesome. And you're so happy and you're so excited and this never happens. Okay. But you're going to be telling every girl this again, if, if this is just pick and choose what you want, if this is, if you're morally opposed to this, okay, I'm, I'm an optimizer. I don't think I'm really crossing any serious lines here. Every girl wants to feel very appreciated. And, and when it comes down to it, I am treating them all very well. Like I'm not, like I listen to their problems. Like if they need, if some guys bother them, I, I tell that guy to fuck off. Like I stand up for them. I take care of them. I, I take them out to dinner. Like I do a lot of shit for them. Like they do a lot of shit for me. And, it, and all the relationships are really nice. Um, <clears throat> but at some point, if she gets out of line and is being out of control and I lay down a boundary and she doesn't respect it, she's gone. Or if the sex with her gets boring, she's gone. Or if she gets like really needy, she's gone. Or if she happens to be like the least hot girl in my rotation and a, a hotter girl comes along, she's gone. But again, you have no fucking contract with this girl. You know, so enter into the world of, of seeing girls regularly without the label. Like cheating is not a thing, okay? So I'm not like necessarily lying my ass off here. I'm just, I'm making them feel special and I'm making them feel like we're going to hang out a lot and I really appreciate them for all these other reasons. That, that's typical, like, old school qualification. But the girl doesn't want to feel like a piece of meat. Like, back, like, a couple of years ago, I was just, like, I had all these girls in rotation. I would just have them come over, bang them, and leave. I wouldn't even want to talk to them about, like, their lives or anything like that. And they're like, oh, I just feel like you're just using me for sex or I feel like a piece of meat or whatever. So, like, you have to actually appreciate and, and show them that you appreciate these non-physical attributes. And you want to, like, have a bond with them that goes beyond just sex, Okay. That's it for number one. Number and just if you, I'm, I'm just throwing a lot of info at you here. Like pause and rewatch or, or whatever if you need to digest it further. Number two, I make very explicit anti one night stand statements. And again, I, I've got some of these. I told you I learned my game and evolved it and optimized it over the years by hanging out with the top guys and by by learning from guys that were better than me. So that some of the pieces of that last one I got from one of my advanced friends. 
Same with this next one, number two. I got part of this from an advanced friend. He was making explicit statements to girls and working really well. He was saying, I don't like cheap one night stands. I'm not necessarily looking for a girlfriend right away either. Okay, because it's not like, oh, let's, let's become super serious and official right away. Um, but I don't want this to feel like a cheap one time thing. Very powerful. It's you're you're setting a frame again for fuck buddy. Each of these is setting the frame towards the fuck buddy. And the first one, I can tell we're gonna hang out a lot. I really appreciate you non-sexually. She's like, wow, I can see myself with this guy for a bunch more times. Now number two, I'm like, oh, I don't I don't like one night stands. Like, cause girls think that's all guys want is they just want to like be a fuck boy. And even if you are a fuck boy, you're 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 portraying yourself as as like anti fuck boy. Okay. Um, I'm not necessarily looking for a girlfriend either, so it's not like we need to get all serious, but I want, I don't want this to feel like a cheap one-time thing. Remember what I talked about in my night game interactions video, how there's a real thing called anti-slut defense, ASD. The girl doesn't want to feel like a whore. She doesn't want things to feel cheap. And you're kind of framing things like if this turns into a one-time thing, I'm going to feel cheap. And then she's by implication, she's going to feel cheap. She doesn't want that. It's not manipulation. This can all come from the heart. Like maybe, maybe you don't want cheap one-time things. Okay. And this advanced friend, I don't, I don't do this part, but you can. He gets them right to the point where they're about to have sex for the first time. And I'll be like, listen, if this is just going to be a cheap one time thing, and the, keep in mind, the girl's all wet and horny and like begging to get fucked right before his dick's about to go in. He's like, listen, if this is going to be a, just a cheap one time thing, I don't even want to do it. And the girl's like, no, 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 it won't, it won't, it won't. And it, she like commits hard into the, I always, I think the reason I don't do it is because I always forget because I'm like, yeah, like time, <laughs> time to bang. I'm not like, oh, like which, what was that tactic I was supposed to do right before I, I fucked her? But he, he will say this and the girl's like, no, 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 I don't want it to be one thing. He's, and I'll be like, no, really. And he's like a top salesman in his company. So this is like a, a takeaway. Like you don't have to buy it. And it makes them be like, no, I, I want to buy it. Um, but you know, I don't do this. Most of you guys forget, but you can do this if you want. So, and, and what's the girl going to say? Like, oh, I wanted to, I was hoping this would just be a one night stand, like get off of, like, don't put your dick in. Like she's going to commit to that frame. And then he like, will pull that card on her later. If she, I mean, she, she never like does try to back out, but she's pretty much locked in as a fuck buddy. Then when you do that. Okay. Number three, I partially camp with this one, but I also corroborated it with a lot of other advanced guys. What we found, and it sounds cheesy, but we found there's like this magic rule of three separate bangs. I don't mean three in a row or three in the same hangout. I'm talking about like three separate times in separate hangouts. Before they are invested, fuck, I have a girl coming in like 20 minutes. She's like on her way already. Date, wine date to the house. Um, okay, there, there isn't a whole ton left. Okay, three separate bangs before they're invested and committed enough to be on rotation. Okay, so this is really, really key. I talked to a lot of guys that are really good with rotations. They all agreed on this. So a common mistake that a lot of you guys make and that I used to make it as well, is you think after you bang the girl, like from a pole, like you bang her or from a date, you bang her, you think that all of a sudden, just cause she fucked you, that now she's a regular, okay? Treat hangout slash bang number two and hangout slash bang number three, just like you did with your first date, your day two, except you're gonna have more inside jokes. The two of you are more comfortable, okay? Like you don't need to like worry if sex is gonna happen because it already happened. Okay, now here's like the sequence that I personally use and, and a lot of other advanced guys agree with. The first date should be casual drinks or casual coffee. Okay, really casual, no food, just keep it nice and light. Coffee, drinks, whatever, or wine to the house or <laughs> coffee or tea to the house, whatever is what, is what I do in the modern time. Um, and then you're gonna fuck her, most likely, if you do what I tell you to in the closing video. Number two, um, I, I put down here in the post something fun like Dave and Buster's like an arcade or a comedy show that's to like get show the, the fun side of your personality. But what I do in the modern day normally is do like an Italian dinner. I put number three here, a romantic sit down dinner of like Italian food with red wine. You can, you can do the dinners as number two or the dinner as number three. It doesn't fucking really matter. The point is you're, you're allowing her to experience different parts of you, including a romantic part. Okay, so it builds a whole bunch of rich investment. So she sees like the fun, intriguing side of you on the first date, um, where she's getting to know you. She sees the romantic part of you during the dinner date where it's, it's more like, you know, you guys maybe dress up a little bit and it's like you're holding hands and that kind of shit. 
you know, so she's really like getting close to you. And then number three, something fun where like you guys are just being goofballs and shit, right? So she gets to experience the different parts of you. But usually after that third bang, it's locked in, okay? Um, I don't know if I talk about this in the rest of the post, but I will, I will state this here. You can do what's called, what I call like a marathon hangout, which is basically like, say you have like the, the drinks date or the coffee date or the wine to the house and you bang her. You can be like, like, I know it's crazy we just met, but do you want to like sleep over? And then like bang again in the morning and like take her to breakfast or some shit. And that kind of gets like two out of the way at once. And then you can like see her the very next day for Italian dinner and it's like locked on rotation. So it's like a, like a shortcut or you can do, oh fuck, I do talk about this, I think. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll, I'll talk about that. Okay, it's in the next point, actually. So I said related to number three, this is number four. Related to number three, get in the three dates as fast as possible. And I talk about in my other videos, you're constantly bat battling against investment dropping. Okay, as time is passing. So as investment's dropping, the girl's getting colder and colder. So like, and I've, I've had this happen so many times. You have like an amazing pull and, and you guys have a great time and you bang her. Or an amazing date, you have a great time and you bang her. And then she goes on vacation or like she's busy with work for a week. And what's happening? All the investment is eroding. You didn't get in your bank two or three. Okay. And, and now you have a problem. You can actually lose her in these situations. So I write, you are constantly battling against investment dropping the girl going cold before you hit that magic number of three smashes. <laughs> what a great term. The sooner you get the three out of the way, the better. Okay. If they're, and I, I'm already making the points I made in the post. If they're super busy or they have to travel, everything can go to shit before you get in bank number two and number three. So I hit, I'm like one step ahead of myself here. Two steps ahead. So what I've been doing recently is having them sleep over after an awesome date and then we'd go to breakfast in the morning. That makes it so like you're getting two out of the way at once and you can sit, set a dinner for the next day or a couple days later. Boom, new rotation, go really quickly. Or you can do like an extended marathon hangout. I, I do this sometimes. Like if I have like a nine or nine five at the house like and they don't have a, a real job like me. Um, well, I, I run a company, a marketing company, non pickup related, but I can make my own hours and stuff so I can do these like super long hangouts hold on a second um oh fuck this chick sent all these pictures um oh fuck she's like lost it's good actually i can finish this video um hold on i'm gonna just send her a fucking Um, okay, Jesus, all these are fucking messages. All right, let me let me just fucking continue. Jesus. Okay, you can do, like, say I have a 9 or 9 5 over. You can do, like, a really long <laughs> date, like, if she doesn't have any obligations. And you can have, they can, like, stay at your house for, like, 24 hours. Or, or sometimes I'll even have them be there for, like, two or three days. And it's just, like, this, like, nonstop fuck fest. But shits are, like, shits pretty much locked after that, like, on rotation. So like an, an example, I, I, I had just, when I was making this post, I said the other day I had a date that included multiple meals out, going to the beach, this is when I lived in Puerto Rico, watching a movie, having a sleepover, walking around in public, holding hands, and it's, she's locked in at that point. Like you've built enough investment, everything's good. Point number five, related to point number three, you want to be setting up the next hangout before the current hangout is over. I make this point in my night game interaction video. That means towards the end of the first hangout, or whatever current hangout, like say you're on the second uh, hangout slash bang, you should suggest the next activity and find out her schedule and solidify it. When you're in the night game situation and you get the phone number because your logistics are bad, you're setting up an exact day, time, place, and activity in the venue. Why? Because her bind temperature and, her, and the vibe is strong. Why, why start from scratch over text? I make that point there. Same applies when you're setting up the second date and set up the third date, second hangout, third hangout. You want to set it up at, before the end of the current hangout is over. Okay. So by the end of the first hangout, we've now set up Italian dinner. By the end of the, the second hangout, we've now set up Dave and Buster's. Okay. And, you, and you're wanting to set up as soon as possible because point, because of point number four, you want to get in those three days as fast as possible. Okay. Um, I actually will probably post this on my website. I've been lazy about posting these on my website, but I'll post, this on the website with the whole text of the fucking post so you guys can read through it. Um, shit. 
I'm just gonna make her wait outside. It's like always fucking shit going on. So annoying. This chick's pretty hot though. I told her I just. <laughs> sometimes I'm. I, I probably seem like a huge bastard to some of you because I'm like breaking the rules and stuff. With, with just saying these things to optimize. I told her I closed a big deal at work today. Like we have to celebrate so that she's like, yay, I'm so proud of you. Bullshit. Um, but it's gonna like make everything so much more fun tonight. <laughs> All right. Number six. Oh, kind of anti-bastard point. Treat her like a princess. Like really, you can actually treat them really well. You can actually treat them like a princess and I do. But here's the caveat, without being a pussy. It's not, this is not a cue to go start flooding her with flowers and candy and balloonograms. Okay, so you can generally care about her life and things she's telling you and have a nice bond with her. Like if you're emotionally distant or apathetic, because I've, I've done this before with them, she'll pick up on that and think you're just there for sex. Um, you can't go like full robot mode all the time or just fucking bang them and have them leave, okay? Because they're gonna feel like pieces of meat and they're gonna they're gonna feel used and they're gonna bounce out, okay? Number seven, do not become over needy. This means do not over text, okay? Do not be fucking blowing her phone up all the time. Make her contribute to the text conversation. A good general rule is keep it about 50-50 or, or keep her texting you more than you're texting her, okay? Setting plans for the next hangout, okay? during the previous hangout helps a lot with this because okay? you don't have to do all this fucking groundwork like hey how's your day and you're like in the back of your mind you're like oh and now i have to do all this work to get another fucking hangout with her what what has happened when she's left the vibe has died down the buying temperature has died down it's much stronger in person so do it in person so that you have a lot less legwork to do over text to get her to meet up okay but do not become more needy when you when you have the urge to hit her up you usually want to resist it okay and when you're seeing a bunch of girls you're not going to give a fuck about this particular girl Texting her all the time, I mean. Um, number eight, I write keep her warm with things like memes, asking her how she is, how her day is going, or texting pictures of cool things you're doing. So, like, if I see, like, a funny sign that, like, can be interpreted sexually, I'll just, like, t snap a picture and, like, copy-paste it to my rotation with, like, like, a laughing, crying face or something. Or I'll, like, if I have a cool picture of something I'm doing, I'll just blast that out to all of them. Or if I haven't talked to them in a few days, I mean, they're usually going to be hitting you up, especially if you're a cool dude. So you don't really need to worry about keeping her warm or whatever. But, you know, you can just blast some cool things they're doing, ask them about cool things they're doing. Okay. Um, motherfucker. I hope she, I don't think she'll leave. Um, here, outside. It's so weird. I gave her the exact address and she's like, I don't, I don't see it. It's literally like a fucking house. Okay. Number eight. Oh, I already went over number eight. Number nine. So number eight was keep her warm with you know, and this isn't like oh no, I don't. You don't have to text her every day. She's me hitting you up too. Just fire off some funny shit here and there, like whenever you feel like it. Is, is a general rule. Number nine. This is pretty important. You should only be seeing her on average once a week. Any less than this is going to make her grow distant slash cold. Any more than this, and she's both of you are going to start catching a bunch of feelings and attachment which will lead to jealousy, her wanting to be your girlfriend, and a host of other problems, okay? <laughs> I'm reading ahead to number 10, it's making me laugh. Number 10, oh, with, with number nine, just to, to reiterate that point, like a lot of you guys will try to like see this girl like four or five times a week. I will see my main chick like two to four times a week or two to three times a week. And a lot of times we will catch feelings and then if she tries to become, no, I talk about this in point 11, okay. Point 10. Fuck the living daylights out of her. <laughs> Can't be any more blunt than that. Um, oh shit, I wrote this post when I was at like 500 something. I said, I'm extremely good at sex after 500 lays. Uh, the, the modern version of this would be almost 800. I have a technique I do with both hands that is a combo of G-spot stimulation plus clit stimulation that makes girls come usually in seven to eight seconds after zero foreplay. I have that video on my channel, how to make a girl orgasm in 10 seconds. Just don't want her to like leave. Sometimes I get like pissed. I'm like, are you at the address I gave you? She's like, I don't, I don't know wh where it is. It's like, we have GPSs in our modern day. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Um, okay, I have a video on my channel, how to make a girl come in the, in ten seconds. Sorry guys, I like fucking start blocking. Okay. 
just caught in a few and I'll come outside and call you. Smiley, which means please don't fucking leave. I want to fucking bang this chick. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll start like blocking. It's kind of rude. I'm just like doing other shit each time I make these videos. I'll try to like block off a period of time and like put my phone on airplane mode so that I can like not be interrupted here. Um, okay, so watch that video so you can, I, I show you how to do the technique. Um, like literally not, like no foreplay, like no stimulation to orgasm in under 10 seconds, like usually seven to eight seconds. And then I like, <laughs> I write in the post, then I relish in the glory and get them to call me a god and shit like that. And it's not like a sick thing. I'm just like, haha, have you ever had that happen before? They're like, no, oh my God, I didn't even know that was possible. I felt like I was being electrocuted. Like, that was the most amazing orgasm I've ever had, blah, blah, blah. And I write in here, and this makes me sound fucking weird as shit. But I was just curious, like, how long it was taking. So I got, with a couple, like, real close fuck buddies, I'm like, let's, like, time this. And I said, I've used a stopwatch for multiple girls. They almost all come before the 10-second mark with this technique. The last girl said it felt like she was being electrocuted, didn't realize this was humanly possible. This technique alone will hook them. Like, you gave her, you've given her, like, some massive pleasure she's never experienced. Another thing I've been doing is ask them what the most they've orgasmed in one session is. Okay, so be before the first time we have sex, I'd be like, what's the, you have to be good at sex to like back this up. And maybe I'll make a video on that. Maybe I'll get like a fucking hot chick and I don't know. She, we can, we can demonstrate. Well, we're not going to fuck on camera. We could maybe. I'll put it on Tumblr or Red 2. I don't like, I don't know. That's weird for you guys watching that. Um, we'll figure out some way to teach you guys how to get good at sex. Um, yeah, I so said this technique alone hooks them. Okay, so you can ask her, like, what's the most you ever come in one session? She'll be like, six, three, two. Like, the numbers are always really low. And I'm like, okay, we're going to beat that this first time. And almost, like, 95% of the time we do. Like, sometimes they, like, met some fucking heavy hitter that, <laughs> that fucking caught him on a good day or whatever, and, and we just barely miss it or whatever. But usually I can, I can beat their lifetime record. Um... So yeah, I said, then I make sure I beat it, of course, it'd be good sex to do this, but I really play it up and be like, damn, where are you going to come for all your sexual needs now in the future? I'm the current record, hold record holder after all, ha ha ha, right? Okay, number 11, this was discussed in a different thread, but the chick starts trying to boyfriend you up if she's trying to, like, get you in a relationship. There are a variety of strategies. My personal favorite is to tell her that I'm either too busy with work, which is 100% false, <laughs> or that I'm not over my last long-term relationship and it wouldn't be fair to her, like, my heart's not ready emotionally, okay? This goes on forever, okay? I, like, I know another advanced guy, he tells this whole rotation about, each, he tells each girl about each other, and a lot of them aren't okay with that. I don't, I don't personally like this strategy, because a lot of them want, they want, they want to at least believe, like, the fantasy that you're, that you're only with them. And I know, like, for a fact, almost all of my chicks are usually just with me, because, again, I'm fucking them really well, I'm providing this alpha presence for them, we're doing fun shit together, they, they like, become, like, infatuated, or not even infatuated, they, like, fall in love, and they... Like I have girls all over the world, all the places place I've lived that all like are like would drop everything and marry me if I if I wanted to. And they know a lot of them know what I do, and they don't care. Like they're just like so into this like shit that I brought to the table over interacting with tens of thousands of girls. But I I write here I, I don't like the strategy of telling them all about each other. I just prefer the don't ask, don't tell. Okay, and then if they ask about the boyfriend bullshit, I give uh, BS reasons. Okay, two more. Chick to leave. Oh shit, hold on a second. She's about to go home. You guys will get to see some uh some some G shit here. Hey, don't come back home. I'm gonna I was just finishing up a business call. I'm gonna come outside right now, I'm gonna find you, okay? Right. Just like pull over where you are. Can you send um can you send me like a pin of where you are? You're probably like within like one block. Just send me a pin of like of where you are. I got the wine already. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll just I'll look on a map. Can you tell me your intersection you're near? Like, text me your intersection you're near, and then I'll come outside and I'll, I'll tell you where to go. Okay. Can you give me just give me like an intersection or street address, and I'll tell you where to go. I'll look at I'll look it up right now. And come outside and tell you where to go. Oh, yeah, 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 and you're on, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, you're like right there. I'm gonna come out right now. Okay. Okay, I'll see you in a sec. Fuck, I'm glad I checked my phone. See, this is the thing, like, I've lost...
bangs like that because she's like, getting pissed. She's like driven around like five times, and I'm just like, I'm almost done with my meeting, but I'm already like, like late for the date or whatever. You know, the dates in my fucking house. All right, number, <laughs> number twelve. She thinks I'm coming out now. Okay, we got two left here. Related to my working volume post, you should be going on new dates all the time. Remember the flow chart I showed in the beginning. You should be fucking pumping new leads in. So having new leads coming all the time, you can replace girls on rotation with hotter, cooler girls. Or if a girl becomes too much of a headache, it's too much maintenance, becomes boring or annoying. And you won't experience, you won't appreciate this until you experience it, but a girl who starts off as a nine drifts into the eight and seven five territory over time after you've fucked her tons of times and her personality becomes predictable, right? Or especially if she starts like bitching and shit like that. So don't be afraid to next any hoe. <laughs> real, real polite. I, some of my some of my past fuck buddies watch these videos and they're like, you sound like so misogynistic. I'm not trying to be like, these terms are just funny to me. Not in a, a rude way, but it's, I mean, the rappers do it too. Uh, for whatever reason you see fit, you can next her and, and replace her with a new one. Shit, I'm, I'm probably going to actually lose this one. This is true abundance. And I said it's a rough life being a god. That's that's like a little quip for the for the people on the forum. Uh, last one. I'm going to be experimenting, but yeah, don't don't be afraid to replace these girls because you're gonna be you're gonna be still be going out and doing night game. You're gonna still be doing Tinder all this shit, and as soon as one becomes annoying or whatever, and you can take on as many of them as, as you can, as you want as you desire. I'm giving you the skills to do it, um, and as many as you can handle in your life. Okay, so I'm gonna be experimenting number thirteen with live-in rotations of three to five, um, nine point five girls that get switched out monthly or bi-monthly. Rationales of having on-demand stunners for group sex who are fully compliant might be the best possible life and game. Unless you subscribe to Neil Strauss's argument in his book, The Truth, that monogamy is the best path, LOLs. Okay, so yeah, that's my goal is to be like Hugh Hefner. Uh, good, I kept it at 30 minutes. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'm going to go try to save this and get fucked. Or fuck her. Number 770. All right.